What up, Dodgers Nation? D Mag here, and it's a special day because today I'm joined by James. You can't get him out, man. Mr. James Altman joins the show. Thanks for rocking with us today, James. Thanks for having me. And James, hey, we're gonna get into some hard hitting baseball topics in just a second. But first, we're gonna get a little warm up, do some rapid fire questions in a segment I'm calling the Outman of the Hour. You ready, James? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Favorite player growing up? Bonds. Favorite? Oh, and he went to your high school too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? He did. Favorite baseball movie? Sandlot. Favorite sport other than baseball? Football. F- linebacker, killing the game, 98 yep. tackles. So you're a ni- uh, favorite team? Niners, probably. Niner Home gang, town. bang, bang. Hey, it's all good. You'll get back to the, to the, you'll get back to the Super Bowl next year. Favorite uh, fast food joint on the road? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'd say it varies. I would definitely say uh, Chipotle is always a go-to. I don't know if I count that as fast food, though, just because you got to walk in. So, yeah, like, drive through only. Cool. Drive through only. I'm gonna go probably in and out. Go in and out. Nice. Do you get the guacamole at Chipotle? Uh, no, I'm cheap. I was about to say, man, it's like a rich kid, but no. Favorite musical artist? Uh, right now it's Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson. I like that. Do you think he's gonna be your walk-up song? I don't know. I, I got one of one song that I've considered from him, but I don't know how it's gonna be. So. Nice, nice. Okay, favorite TV show. Favorite TV show of all time. Uh, Game of Thrones. That's an easy answer, though. Hey, that's the right answer, man. One of the greatest shows ever, GOT. Okay, any superstitions? Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a rock with a face painted on it in my locker room. And uh, I, uh, I like to feed the rock coffee before I go out and play. Wow, that's incredible. That's like your version of Joe Boo. It's like some major league stuff. I love that. So you got the rock. Hey, you probably had it in your locker before your debut. So it definitely works. <laughs> so, okay. Which teammate would you most want to have your back in a bar fight? Grad roll. <laughs> Bruce Dar, great. A, he looks like he'd be a bouncer. Bruce Dar. He's like a WWE superstar. The last one, we'll get you on this one. Most famous person in your phone, James. In my phone? Oh, uh, I mean, you probably name any of the Dodger players and pick the most famous one off of that. But um, yeah, I'd say that. So one of the Dodger players, okay? I was gonna say maybe yeah. could be one of the Sarah alumni, Tom Brady, Barry Bonds. I mean, you never know. No, but uh, I don't have their number now. <laughs> yeah, good times. Well, hey, there you go. So now let's get into some baseball talk because before this, watch that hype video. I'm hype once again. Got me wanting to run through a brick wall. Think we're about to uncancel my LA Fitness membership. Get those P90X tapes back out because hey, man, talk about that hype video and how hungry you are this off season because you're putting that work, my man. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, Scott Ohashi did a great job making that video. He's the, um, he works with the Dodgers. He does a lot of like the backstage Dodgers stuff. Um, yeah, he just did a great job filming. He just called me up one day and was like, hey, you wanna you wanna like film for, for uh, a workout? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then as soon as we were done, he's like, hey, I'll just, I'll cut this up and send it over to you tonight. And I sent it and loved it, posted it. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely hungry. I'm excited for this year. I'm telling you, got me hype. And I'm always fascinated with players' routines. Take us through a day in the life of James Altman during the offseason. What does your daily routine look like right now? Uh, right now, I'm in Arizona. So I'm waking up, getting to the field around 8 or so. Um, I'll go in, get a little bit of treatment, just like 10 minutes, just like kind of get stretched out, um, eat breakfast. Then I'll go into the weight room and do my prep work, which is just basically more stretching, and uh, hit the cage. I'll do some defense, uh, throw a little bit, come back in, um, get a lift in, get my conditioning in, and then I'll uh, go back in the training room just to get a little bit more treatment, just to make sure my body's feeling good, you know, come, come the start of spring training. Nice. Yeah. And go on a podcast. I'm sure you fit that in there as well. And would you yeah. say that after you, you got a taste of it last year, you got that first big league action, would you say you're even more hungrier this off season than any off season in your career? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, I'm trying to treat it like another year. I know that, you know, there's, there's, uh, some dreams that could be accomplished, uh, coming up, you know, with this next year and, you know, some goals I've set for myself just since when I, when I was a little kid, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I don't know if I'm hungrier. I feel like every year I'm always excited coming in, looking to get better and, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm definitely looking forward to this year. 
Yeah, and you talked about dreams. I want to rewind a little bit because we have to talk about your debut. Now, there's been over 20,000 big leaguers in history, and 133 of them have hit a home run in their first big league at bat. You were the eighth Dodger to do that. Now, I know you said after the game that you blacked out, but now that some time has passed, what was going through your mind as you're rounding those bases? And for someone who's never going to experience something like that, what does that actually feel like? So, honestly, like, like, honest truth i was like when i hit it i was like all right cool like that's awesome but you know it was all it was all business at that point for me because it just felt like i was playing a game like i had played a hundred before that same season you know and it, it just felt like i got one and you know was able to put some runs on the board and then you know once once i was able to separate myself from that situation that's when I was like, oh, my God, like, that was so cool. <laughs> I mean, it was unbelievable, man. I have to ask you this. How many times have you watched that home run over under 500 times? I mean, it's got to be. I want to say under, but it might be over. Like, it's. Uh, <laughs> I watched like six times, like waiting for you to log into the Zoom. So, yeah, man, I, I totally understand. <laughs> I'd have that all, all over my house. But, uh, yeah, it was such a great moment. Not only that, is you had so much success right away. I mean, you really hit the ground running and you really just exploded onto the scene. Your first two career games, you reached base seven times. Only Dodger to reach base more times at the start of their career was Casey Stangle, who did it eight times in 1912. And the question I have is, what does it feel like to kind of be a part of Dodger lore forever? And how much much confidence has it given you knowing that you were able to have so much success early on and has that momentum carried on into your off season? Yeah. I mean, I, I would definitely say like it gave me a little bit of confidence. Um, just like when I got sent down, I just had like, I felt like I had something under my belt, but, um, yeah, I mean, Dodgers have such an amazing history throughout the game and, uh, it's pretty cool to like have my name just get thrown up in there, you know, wh whatever stats it may be. But, uh, yeah, it's it's I think if anything, it just gave me like a little bit of experience, a little taste just to, you know, set the set the standard higher going into the off season, kind of understanding like, OK, like this is this is really what it's working towards now, like all this, all the hitting and all the workouts I do and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's but other than that, honestly, like I'm, I feel like I'm trying to treat it the same as any other off season because that's what it is. It's just time off to get better. Yeah, I think that's important because you're gonna have to have that mindset just to make that incremental growth each and every year to get to where you're at. But I want to ask you, what were your impressions just of the big leagues? Just the standard, the competition, playing in the bigs, the competition, of course, is better. But is there anything that surprised you in your first taste of big league action? Uh, I would say the consistency of like elite players is was the biggest difference because like we're like double a triple a you're seeing guys that are really good and that are big league arms or like big league bats stuff like that but when you get to the big leagues all those guys are big league arms and big league bats so it just like it's nothing it's nothing that i haven't seen but it's just a lot more of you know a small sample size that i saw in the minor league yeah, when you're out there, you're seeing all-stars, you're seeing Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. What were your takeaways from their preparation, just being around those guys and seeing how they go about their business? They're they're very, um, they're, it's, they're treated like a business. They're very serious when they're working. You know, it's, it's you know, they're all great guys, but they're, they're very, like, when it's time to work, it's time to work. And I feel like, I feel like we can all learn a lesson from that. Just, it's not time to mess around when you're, getting in the cage and stuff like that get your work done then go have some, have some fun yeah putting that work and were there any of your teammates that kind of took you under their wing and gave you any advice you're going to take with you for the rest of your career uh i was i was following will smith around a lot just asking him questions um we had the same agent so my agent told him like hey he's gonna have a lot of questions <laughs> yeah. For you. So, yeah so you kind of got to babysit him a little bit but uh honestly i was just hanging out where anytime i had a question i'll just walk up to him ask him most of the time it was like a yes or no question like hey is it okay if i do this or would it be a bad look if i do this most of the time he's like yeah dude go ahead just be yourself but uh yeah i think i'll always remember muncie uh like right before the game started he's like hey just so you know like the bases are longer and they're pitching from 61 feet and like it's a completely different game and i was like yeah like kind of laughed and and he would just stay in that to remind me like it's still the same game so just go have fun 
Yeah, and it seems like all the players at the big league level are very welcoming to the young players. And you're going to basically be that guy to kind of pay it forward to some of the young guys in this youth movement. What are your thoughts on the Dodgers youth movement and really being at the front of that? Guys that can really make an impact this season moving forward. What are your thoughts on being a part of that group? Yeah, I mean, it's it's I guess it's it's not official till it happens. But uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting that, you know, I might have a shot this year and uh, I just want to take advantage of it and and. And honestly, in terms of the youth movement, there's so many good players like up and down the system with us. Like I'm, I'm in the cage over in Arizona. I'm seeing some of these kids hitting, and it's crazy. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be good stuff in a couple of years. So much talent down there, and for years to come, we're gonna see it at the big league level. And I also want to ask you about Dave Roberts. I mean, what are your impressions of playing under Dave Roberts? I mean, he's a very positive guy. We know that he gives you guys a lot of confidence out there. What was it like to play for Doc? Awesome. He was actually, uh, when I was growing up, going to Giants games and stuff, when he was on the Giants playing center field, he was one of one of my favorite players on the team. So it was cool because I was like a fan of him first, and now he's now he's my coach. But uh, he's he's awesome. Like super positive, very straightforward, and and honest with guys, which I which I appreciate. And um, he he makes you feel good the second you meet him. And he's he's a good listener, like good communicator, and and. I just feel like I want to like I want to be around him more just because he's doing such a good job with, you know, making me feel confident, making me feel good and ready. And, you know, it's he's great, dude. Yeah, I know, Dave, he has such a big impact on his players. And I want to ask you, too, because you end up going back down to the Meyer Leagues. And we know in Bull Durham, Crash Davis's line about playing in the show, how someone always there to hold your luggage and they have the best hotels. What was the biggest perk that really stood out to you playing for the Dodgers in the show? Uh, I love eating, so I would say the food, like the food was incredible. You can get whatever you want, basically. So that was cool. You know, in the minor leagues, we get, the Dodgers do a great job feeding us. Like they gave us really good food and like good value, nutrition, you know, stuff like that. Um, but the food there was unreal. I and mean, just whatever you wanted, like coffees, lattes, espressos, a little dangerous There's a chef though. there making you food. Yeah. Yeah. De- oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's incredible, man. I don't know how I would be able to stay disciplined with that, but that's awesome. And then I want to ask you, ask you about how you, the progress you made at the plate last season, because we saw last season you had 32 home runs combined and you continue to improve at the plate. But is there anything this off season that you're kind of zeroing in on to try to continue to get better at the plate? Um, this off season, I was trying to train hitting the ball the other way to the opposite field, just a little bit better. Um, and you know, other than that, like, I, I don't want to change too much. I just want to like train my eyes and my, my coordination and, and, you know, all this stuff. So I was trying to hit like, like really nasty lefty sliders coming off the machine. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, I just wanted to see a little bit more lefty spin and drive the ball the other way a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. Yeah, and that's something I would I actually want to ask you about. Is we know this organization, they have a history of platooning, and to get better against left-handed pitching, you need that experience. How important is it to get that experience to go face left-handed pitchers at the big league level? It's huge. It's it's uh, it's just hard because you want to you want to try and like expose yourself to it as much as possible, and you know most BP throwers are throwing right-handed, and you know there's only there's only a couple in the organization that are good BP throwers that throw from the left side. So I think just like trying to expose yourself to that kind of, um, that look as much as possible is kind of the, the secret to it. I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cause we've seen you hit for power against lefties. It's just about kind of becoming a more well-rounded hitter against them. Do you think the number one key is experience or are there maybe some adjustments that you might consider making in the box? There there might be some adjustments. Uh, I've been playing around with a few things with the hitting coaches, just trying to change like sight lines and stuff like yeah. that. Um, there, there might be some adjustments. Uh, I've been playing around with a few things with the hitting coaches, just trying to change like sight lines and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would definitely say the more the more I face them, 
the more I'll be able to make an adjustment off of them. Yeah, and I want to ask you about your defense. Everyone likes to talk about what you do at the plate, but for me, when I watch your highlights, I look at those defensive plays. I mean, you're sacrificing your body, jumping over the fence, the way you know how to time your dives. It's just uncanny. And we know you played football in high school, and you have that athleticism, that fearlessness. Just talk about your mindset and how much pride you take for your defense. I try and treat like outfield as if I'm playing a free safety. So try not to let anything get behind me and uh, just understand that I'm the last line of defense and and picking when I can take those shots to lay out for a ball or something like that. I think that's the big key. Like you got a runner on second base with two outs. Maybe that's the time to lay out, save a run for your team. But if it's the leadoff batter and you're down four runs, like don't let them get a big inning. So just kind of thinking through those situations, uh, I would say is is the biggest thing with the outfield. But other than that, you just they hit it and you go get it. It's like fetch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm telling you, man. I watch those highlights. I see the football player in you, the board number 34 at Sarah High School, 98 total tackles. How much do you think that has played into your your game as far as just being so athletic out there? Because that's what really stands out when I watch you as an athletic defender, just so well rounded across the board. Yeah, Sarah got me. They they kicked my butt when we were playing football. They like. The training was awesome. The conditioning was awesome. I think they helped train uh, our mindsets when we were there, just making us into like tougher players. And I tried to carry that over into baseball as best as I could. Obviously there's differences. I think one of the biggest differences is uh, like when I'm playing football, I could be as emotional as I want and I get angry and I start getting better, but that doesn't work with baseball. Yeah, no, that's a great point there. You definitely have to stay a little more even keel. It's a little less raw, raw in baseball. But I want to ask you, too, is talking about the adjustments that you might make playing defense, playing the outfield position at the big league level. Is there anything you have to do differently as far as reads go, as far as kind of adjusting to getting jumps on balls? Or is it like you just said, kind of the same thing, kind of read and react and just going out there and make plays? Yeah, I mean, it, it should be read and react, but there are there are small differences. I would say, like, when I was in San Francisco, uh, the lights were just different. So, um, you know, kind of understanding like when the ball might go into the lights and almost treat it like getting a ball that's in the sun or something like that. Um, and the stadiums are so much bigger. So I think if people yeah. are wearing a lot of white, it might, it might mess up um, how I read the ball off the bat just because it's, it's a little harder to pick up because there's less of a backdrop. But um, other than that, honestly just go get it they hit the ball harder so understanding that but yeah yeah, no, absolutely. And when you talk about you playing in the show, playing in bigger stadiums, and we know it's hard enough just to get to the show, but it's even harder to stay there. What do you think is the biggest key for you to sticking at the big league level and really fully realizing your potential at the next level? Uh, so I've heard the saying that you get to the show, You if, if you hit, you can get to the show and defense will keep you in the show. Uh, so hopefully... I want to. I want to just keep my defense as good as it can be for as long as as long as I can do it. But um, I think that'll help me stick around just because it turns me into more of a reliable guy that can get the job done on the field and and you know whether or not I'm hitting. At least if my defense good, I can I can affect the game that way. Yeah, and how important is that? Is just being able to stay consistent defensively and not let the ups and downs of baseball at the plate affect your effort level or how you go about what you do on the defensive side. It's huge. It's I, I always like to tell like my little cousin or other like young baseball players like even though you're not hitting, just try and affect the game any way you can. So it's it's crazy how many runs you can save on defense if you just make all your plays or even if you just charge the ball hard on a base hit and the third base coach doesn't send them in. Um, there's there's so many like small things that don't really get noticed that can save you a run or at least save you 90 feet to give your pitcher another shot to get the guy out and then and then other than defense there's also like base running if you can get on base and find a way to get to third base on a base hit like that's that's huge that, that helps the game so much helps your team out so much 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And also, you make a great play, a great catch. It gives you confidence because you usually do that next inning. You go on to do great things. But I want to ask you, too, about you hitting the cycle twice last season. Twice in four days, you hit for the cycle. More cycles than a laundry mat. It was incredible. Now, the Dodgers have not hit for a cycle since Belly did it in 2017. One of my predictions is that you will hit for the cycle once this season. And the question I always want to ask big leaguers is, at what point during that day are you starting to think, yeah, maybe I need to go for the triple. I need to go for the double. Is that does that ever cross your mind? Just to be honest here. Honestly, no. Like the the first one I hit, I I was coming up for my fourth at bat and I I hit another triple and I knew I needed a home run. But like I was just letting the the situation kind of dictate what my approach should have been. Um, and then and then when I hit the home run on in the last at bat, it was just I was just trying to hit the ball hard. Uh, to the right side because we had a guy on second base so i just wanted to get the guy over <laughs> and it, yeah <laughs> yeah good things happen when you hit the ball hard right james i mean yeah that, exactly that's just how it is but i want to talk to you about your time at double a because you started the season in double a and you were there when they implemented the restricted shift rule and i want to know one what were your initial impressions of it and also how do you think it's going to impact you at the plate and what should fans expect from it okay so initial reaction was i i honestly didn't notice it that much compared to the the big shifts or like just any compared to not having the shift at all i didn't notice it as much just because in the minor league system there's a little bit less shifting going on because the scouting reports are just a little bit less thorough in general um obviously towards the end of the season a team would get to know me and they they would move over to the other side or something like that but um but yeah, I would I would say that there's going to be some more hits for sure. And I think there's going to be a lot of really cool defensive plays that come of it because guys are going to have to range out a lot more. Um, but like the, the shortstop was like almost right behind second base, which is where they would normally play me anyways. He was just on the other side. Um, but the biggest difference for me was that the second baseman had to be on the dirt. So if I smoke a ball in the hole, like there's a good shot it's getting through now, unless they make a really good play. Yeah, now you beat me to it. I was just going to ask you about that, where the shortstop was lined up, how closely they were lined up to that bag at second. But I've seen some stuff, and they definitely can get close. You can also manipulate the outfield a little bit. But like you said at the end, it's still going to reward hitters and hard contact. And to me, it seems like it'd be so frustrating to hit a rocket shot that goes right up the middle that's been a hit for so many years that goes as an out as a left-handed hitter. How excited are you to really kind of have a little bit more of a balance at the plate with the restricted shift? It's gonna be cool, you, you know. I there was a couple hits that I got in Double A that you know, as soon as it left my bat, I was like, oh, out, and then it just was able to find a hole. Um, and I feel like that doesn't happen as much on the left side with pulled ground balls, just because you know it's a shorter throw to first. The second baseman is usually playing a little further back because of the shorter throw. So I'm um, I'm thinking that lefties are gonna get some more hits for sure, and and I think it's gonna be good for the game. Yeah, and it sounds like to me that it kind of all balances out at the end. Some hits that maybe were not going to go as hits last year will go as hits now, but then now in the more traditional alignments that maybe some that you would get wouldn't at, at this point too. So yeah, I mean, I'm just happy to see the game have more balls in play and create more action. It's going to be very interesting to see the numbers early on and how they're going to try to hack the system next because I think it's going to be hilarious to see that shortstop lined up so closely to second base, but great to get your thoughts on that. And I also want to ask you too about your debut at Dodger Stadium because last year you played in four games all road games you played at Coors you played up at Oracle in San Francisco what's it going to be like to make that debut at Dodger Stadium and have you thought much about that it's gonna be awesome I'm looking forward to it I I uh I was able to catch like the back end of uh like one of the last games of the season uh, uh but I was just I wasn't on the in the bench or anything like that I was just there and the energy is awesome I'm excited to play in LA the fans are super into it and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But I also to ask exactly. you about your role on this year's team, because if you look at the center field spot, we know Cody Bellinger, he occupied that for so many years. He's in Chicago and there's so many talented outfielders on this team. You have you, you have Trace Thompson, you have Chris Taylor, you have Jason Hayward. What is it like to be a part of that outfield mix and how much better does that make you knowing how much great competition you have in the outfield? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm excited about Hayward, honestly. He's he's a great defender, and I feel like I can learn a lot from him. So 
I can't wait to start picking his brain once he gets out here. But uh, yeah, I mean, competition is a good thing. It's it's gonna bring us all up, and and I think I think it's gonna I think we're gonna get a lot of work done, and I think we're gonna learn a lot from each other. I hope at least I'm gonna learn a lot from them. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask you about that, but that's great to hear that. Yeah, it's really about soaking in from the veterans. And also to ask you about Cody Bellinger, because Cody Bellinger, a Gold Glove award-winning outfielder. What's something you took from him? Were there any conversations? Did you guys ever talk shop about being outfielders? What did you learn from Cody Bellinger as an outfielder during his time in L.A.? I would say the biggest thing that I learned from Cody was that he he's just really fluid in the outfield. Like, he, he lets his athleticism take over. Um, he does he does all the small things in the outfield so and he's a, he's a really good defender he's an unbelievable defender and like i think just the biggest thing is that he just played free out there and fluid and, and you know low stress at least from what I, what what it seemed like to me and and i think it showed on the field too because he can get to so many balls and he flies he's so fast yeah, no, absolutely. It seems like you can take something from all these defenders and kind of implement them in your game. And like I said, we talked about the athleticism, the way you play the position earlier. But I want to talk to you, though, about the outfield and your role. We know that you'd embrace any role. We know that you're a high character guy that just wants to help this team win. But to get to your level, you have to have that mindset that you're the guy. Is there a part of you that says, look, I want to be the starting outfielder. I want to take over in center field. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would. I, I... I'm going to give you a boring answer, but like, I, I just want to keep getting better. Obviously I want to be a starter in the big leagues. Like that's, that's no doubt. That's my goal. And it, and with the Dodgers, that'd be even more amazing. But, um, I, I want to just keep getting better. I feel like the rest will take care of itself. I feel like if I'm too focused on the end goal, then I'll I'll start forgetting like oh I need to go do my prep work and do my conditioning today for like my agility you know it just I I work like staring ten feet in front of me I feel like so. I'm sorry for the boring answer, but that's all. No, that's a great answer because it's all about the process. You can't go to the destination. It's about the journey there. And as long as you put in that work and you do what you do every day with the grinding and, and working out like you do, and you put in all that extra time, the success is going to come and you're going to find a spot on the Dodgers. So yeah, definitely. I definitely think that's a great answer there. So yeah, I also want to ask you too about just this team and the talent and how much the expectations kind of affect you because in other organizations, you probably might have already got some more opportunities, but there's so much talent in this organization. Sometimes you have blocking at certain positions. What is it like just playing with this Dodgers organization, kind of trusting the process, knowing that, hey, your opportunity will come. It's just about being ready. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I came into pro ball with a lot of work that I felt like I needed to do, like defensively, offensively, you know, just I, I, I feel like I had some of the tools, but I wanted to like really develop them. And the Dodgers development is is so good that it feels like a no brainer, like trusting that because it's like I've come so far from like your guys' wisdom anyways. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep trusting it because it's been working up until this point. Yeah, and that's what I've heard. It's about just becoming the best player that you can be, and the results will come with that. But, James, I'm going to get you out of here on this one. A little fill in the blank. 2023 will be a successful season for James Outman if... 2023 will be a successful season for me if I stay healthy and stay on the course. There you go. That's all you got to do, man. Hey, we're. So, I think you're going to have a banger of a year, man. I'm telling you, James Alvin last year was just a little. That was the trailer. This year is the movie for you, James. I'm very excited for your success, and I think it's going to be a big year for you. Already really becoming this mythic folk here with fans, the way you stepped onto the scene. But we thank you so much for joining us here on the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in spring. And uh, good luck this season, James. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you want to see James Altman as the starting center fielder for the Dodgers? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm...